this is Humble Woman Ministries, and I wanted to do a study of legalistic and liberal Christians. I have run across my fair share of both in my life, as well as on YouTube, and I just kind of wrote down some thoughts about both and wanted to share them with you. Legalistic Christians judge you with an unrighteous judgment. They bear standards for others that not even they can attain. And when a fellow Christian stumbles, rather than trying to restore that person to faithfulness, they prefer to kick them when they're down. They also tend to place their own personal convictions on others and to make them law. So, for example, they will tell you it's a sin to drink, but that's not really true. The Bible says it's a sin to be a drunkard, but because God told the legalist Christian to stay away from alcoholic beverages, they think this applies to everyone. On the other hand, liberal Christians don't like to judge. Whenever someone is caught in sin or is known to be living in sin, the liberal Christian will not rebuke them. And when another Christian rebukes a sin, it is looked upon as a huge disappointment for being so unjesus like Most liberal Christians confuse reproach or rebuke with passing judgment and condemning someone. They make it so a fellow Christian can't even make a judgment call or rebuke another's sinful actions without being labeled an unloving, condemning Pharisee. But condemnation and rebuke are two totally different things. Legalistic Christian is critical of everyone and everything. They like to preach against immorality such as homosexuality, drunkenness, drug abuse, fornication, but they'll minimize the sins of spiritual and verbal abuse, pride and arrogance, envy and covetousness, lying, selfish ambition, or gossip, many of which harbor these very things within themselves. The liberal Christian, on the other hand, is accepting of everyone and everything. Liberals look no different from the world other than their weekly church attendance. Legalistic Christians like to promote God's law. They believe a Christian must endure to the end in order to make it to heaven. Some even believe that their works save them. They like to pick apart other Christians based upon their oftentimes limited understanding of the narrow path between faith and repentance. And liberal Christians like to promote God's love. The liberal Christian's cautiousness when dealing with sin is called love. The legalistic Christian stresses works because good works are so important to the legalist Christian and sin is so detrimental, these people tend to come off as arrogant. They begin to think that they are better than others based off their works or self-discipline from certain sins. While a liberal Christian likes to stress faith, the liberal Christian believes that if a person has faith, they are eternally secure can never fall away, and are guaranteed a ticket into heaven no matter what. They call this doctrine eternal security, or once saved, always saved. And it is adamantly preached by liberal Christians with scriptures to support this belief and to refute anyone who claims the opposite. And this is the biggest and most contrary belief to the legalistic Christian. Legalistic Christians confront sin in an unloving way. Legalists like to view people in sin as weak, and weakness is despised. If discovered in sin, your brothers and sisters will gossip about you, shun you, mock you, or patronize you. They will hold your past sins against you, even if you have repented of them, and they will harbor a righteous feeling in their own hearts because they sincerely believe that they are better and holier than you are. However, the liberal Christian thinks it's unloving to confront sin. They don't want to be like the unloving legalists, so they just believe that God will deal with that person and believe that you should just mind your own business. In fact, their motto is, don't confront my sin and I won't confront yours. Legalistic Christians hide the need for correction. They make sure to keep their sins well hidden for fear of disdain, ridicule, and condemnation from others. The knowledge of other people's sins make the legalistic Christians feel better about their own concealed sins and feeds their self-righteousness. Even if you testify about being free from certain sins, you will likely still 
be looked upon with disgust or mocked even though you no longer are that person therefore a legalist has to be near perfect in the sight of others without a spot as they hide behind their facades and scoff at others they forget the horrible mess they used to be and in some cases still are they love to talk about the errors in the lifestyles of others while overlooking the issues within themselves they oftentimes will suffer from depression because they are secretly living in sin but they can't tell anybody for fear of what people will say so they suffer in silence and their sins get worse the arrogant and boastful take satisfaction in their self-discipline over big sins apart from the power of the holy spirit and all the while they pat themselves on the back and say god is pleased with me liberal christians detest you for correcting them rebuke is something done very infrequently with the liberal christians it's viewed as cruel and as uncomfortable their doctrine of once saved always saved seems to protect them from eternal consequence and even guilt so when you see a liberal christian you often see a person who's comfortable in sin doing whatever they want no matter how it affects god or the neighbors they claim to love both groups deny and justify sin in different ways both the legalistic and the liberal christian are in error regarding sin and their attitudes in dealing with it everyone sins some have more troubles with certain sins than others and god commands us not to beat each other up but to pray and restore one another both the liberal and the legalist minimize the problem of their own sin and shift the blame they both view themselves as righteous either for judging harshly or for not judging at all both groups are two-faced in character and their uncanny ability for flattery and platitudes have you ever heard someone tell you i'm praying for you but you know they're not that's what i'm talking about legalism is a part of both of their lives for in some degree because they judge each other by their spiritual performance rather than taking an honest look at sin within themselves and within the body of christ they both err in the development of the saint one of the purposes of the body of christ is to assist in the development of the saint but these christians aren't really growing their character doesn't change and neither does their lifestyle oddly enough solving the shortcomings of both the liberal and the legalist begins with an gaining respect for god's law the liberal christian's humanistic morality is insufficient proverb sixteen twenty five says there is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way of death lest we drift away from god on the shifting tides of relativism we need the anchor of god's absolutes genuine love does not deny or downplay the law but fulfills it romans thirteen ten says love does no harm to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law christian liberals need the ten commandments to teach them truth and perhaps surprisingly the solution for legalists is also a deeper understanding of god's law they would hunger and thirst for christ's righteousness his alone if they fathomed the hopelessness and sinfulness of their own supposed goodness before they can truly appreciate the savior they must comprehend what he is saving them from for that they need the convicting testimony of god's law god is absolutely holy and no one can ever become righteous enough to deserve acceptance the only hope of relieving sin's debt is the gift of god's grace in christ god bless you